Hey everybody, welcome back to the Star Wars channel. My name is David and today we're going to talk about The Mandalorian. We would be honored if you would join us. All right, The Mandalorian. Wow. New TV series launched November 11th on Disney Plus. And yes, officially, I'm the last person to talk about it. <laughs> I know there's been a bunch of other Star Wars channels out there that have done their review or they've done their synopsis or they've done their, uh, you know, first impression. And uh, I waited because um, I didn't watch it the first night that it came out. Uh, we planned to as a family, but but other things came up and so we weren't able to. And I was, I was, I was crushed. I was disappointed. Like I really was looking forward to it. And then we didn't get to do it. I, I totally wanted to watch it without my kids. Like after they went to bed, I was like, honey, let's just watch it. And let, but I didn't do it. I, I, I was a, I was a good dad. Um, and then uh, after the first one was over, I kind of felt like, wow, that's not enough. Like, I, you know, I, and then we started to see it on the internet. People were saying, oh, the episodes are too short. So it really felt like episode one and episode two together made a complete story arc. Like I would put those two episodes together. And I think what would be really interesting, and I'll just throw this out to the creators and see if they listen. Uh, when this gets launched on DVD, it'd be really neat to see them splice four episodes together into a movie. You know, give us an opening title shot at the beginning, credits at the end, like how we are used to seeing the Star Wars films as a, a completed film and to take it out of the TV world and make a larger episode on DVD. I would sit there and watch the entire thing all the way through like I do when I sit down to watch a regular Star Wars film. So that would be interesting. I'd be curious to see if they would do something like that format wise. So I wanted to walk through episode one and episode two really quick and just give you kind of like my brief uh, opinion and you know what I thought uh, of course as a disclaimer there are you know spoilers ahead so if you have not watched this yet please know that and stop watching if you don't want spoilers but maybe you're like I don't know if I'm gonna get Disney Plus the jury's still out let me just say you want to get this if you're a Star Wars fan this is this has been awesome I was really hoping this would be more like what we saw with Rogue One somebody who can take the series and bring a lot of honor to the original trilogy, somebody that is going to uh, be genuine with the original fan base, but then someone who also wants to create new fans. So I think, um, you know, Dave Filoni and George Lucas and John Favreau have done a great job um, with that. And it's this has been the series that we've always wanted. All right, so in episode one, they introduced the Mandalorian, who is played by uh, Pedro Pascal, and he arrests his bounty, who is played by Horatio Sands. And you do get a little comedy relief uh, in that. And you get to see some cool things in the bar fight as he's getting ready to arrest him. So you get to see the Mandalorian whipcord grappler. You get to see the little bounty discs. Uh, and then you get to see uh, him taking off in his ship. And you get to see some really cool ship shots. Then you see the Mandalorian go off into this weird like back alley place that's being guarded by uh, some dirty old stormtroopers and uh, he accepts a new job where the guy pays him in advance with some money but then also some metal that he then later takes to a Mandalorian temple where that metal is melted down and it's forged into his Beskar armor. He then flies to a desert planet named Arvella 7 and he is trying to find this new bounty who all he's told is 50 years old. Uh, once he lands he's attacked by two blurgs uh, we remember those from uh, the cartoons and a vapor farmer named Quill, who is played by Nick Nolte. He's an Ugnaught who speaks English, which is cool. Uh, he shows the Mandalorian uh, where to find the target and he uh, helps him by giving him Blurgs to ride. Once the Mandalorian reaches the location, he teams up with a bounty hunter droid, IG-11, who is played by Taika Watiki, who is the director of Thor Ragnarok. Uh, and then IG-11 you know, helps him destroy all the bad guys, which is really cool. Uh, and you get to see that they find the 50-year-old uh, target, but it turns out to be this infant who looks like one of Yoda's species. Uh, IG-11 attempts to shoot the baby, and the Mandalorian then shoots IG-11. In the second episode, uh, Mandalorian is walking the little baby species to his ship, and then the Mandalorian fights off some ambushers, 
who try to take the baby from him and he finds out that they're also bounty hunters and they're tracking the baby the same exact way that he is. He arrives back at his ship. He finds that it's been stripped by Jawas. He then goes back to the Ugna and says, hey, I need your help to get my stuff back. The two of them go and track down the Sandcrawler and they try to negotiate with the Jawas how the Mandalorian is going to get the parts for his ship. The Jawas say that they want an egg which uh, leads the Mandalorian to this kind of big cave where a large horned beast lives. The two of them fight back and forth, but the Mandalorian's getting his, yeah, he's getting kicked around a lot. He doesn't, he doesn't do very good. And uh, as the beast is going to swoop in for the kill, the baby figure reaches out his arm and lifts the beast using the force, but it ends up draining the baby of his life energy and he passes out. The Mandalorian then goes back to the Jawas. He trades the egg for all of his ship components. And then the Ugna and him go back to uh, his strip ship. And the two of them repair the ship. And then the Mandalorian leaves the planet. And like I said, the two episodes together feels like one cohesive story. I would have gladly have watched both of them together just so that I could feel like there was some, ah, uh, you know. But um, I know that George Lucas loves the old Western um, cliffhanger shows and probably this is uh, John Favreau's way of paying homage to that like John this is this is where Star Wars came from or were those uh, serials that used to be shown in the movie theater that people would return for week after week to find out what happens next so this is totally a throwback and, you know, and a knock on the door to that um, plus uh, I love the fact that it starts off on a desert planet you know the Star Wars trilogy started off on a desert planet and so that's that's a great uh, knock on that door. And just really both episodes were filled with Easter eggs, filled with all kinds of things that fans of everything would recognize. There was stuff in there from Return of the Jedi. There was stuff in there from A New Hope because we got to see the spy uh, or at least a species from the spy. And you got to see like why they have that long like elephant-like trunk. Um, there was so many great little things. There was, a, there, there was even a reference to the Christmas... Uh, holiday special okay so uh it was so so neat it was it was neat to see um ig11 and like how they walk and move you know because in the original empire strikes back ig88 didn't do anything i think his head turned and that was it so it was neat to see like how that droid function works it was great to see an ugnaught and just flesh that character out a little bit more uh, you know speaking and you know they're really good with tools and just it was neat to see that uh, it was great to see the Jawas again and the Sandcrawler and to get an inside peek to like all the doors and whistles and the things that make the Sandcrawler work. And then to hear the um, Jawa language and being spoken by other people and, you know, communicating with the Jawas. So that was neat. Um, the horned beast that he fought looked like something from uh, the prequel trilogy that they fought in the arena. Uh, there was a there was a moment in that battle where the Mandalorian's armor for his chest armor came undone and you saw the back side of it. I mean, that's cool. Uh, it was cool to see um, him get the little um, piece of metal that he uh, had forged into his pauldron because now we're kind of seeing, oh, maybe the armor that he's wearing isn't going to be the armor that we see throughout the entire thing. Maybe we're going to see him try to collect more pieces to his armor and forge them together and make the traditional uh, Mandalorian armor that we're all familiar with. Maybe he's trying to do that. There's all kinds of ways that this could go. I love the fact that they didn't take off his helmet. I, I hope they don't take off his helmet all the way through season one. I'm fine with that. I don't care if I ever see his face. That was part of the mystery of Boba Fett that we all loved, that we didn't know who he was. I love the fact that he didn't have these quippy, funny one-liners that made him like too cheesy. Uh, I loved uh, the fact that he didn't really talk that much at all. Uh, the more mystery that you can create around him, the better, because again, this is why we all love Boba Fett, right? I don't even care if they don't even ever mention Boba Fett. As far as I'm concerned, he's dead, right? He's dead. We don't have to bring him into this series at all. This can be totally about the Mandalorian. I'm, I'm good with that. So overall, I was really, really impressed. I cannot wait to see where Jon Favreau takes this next. I know he's also going to release uh, director responsibilities every so often and give them to other people so that, you know, everybody can kind of put their own voice, uh, to the series. And I think that's also very George Lucas and very Star Wars E as well. Um, man, 
I can't stop thinking about it. All the props were great. The music was great. Uh, all the background animation uh, I know was done by the video game company that does a lot of Star Wars stuff. That was great. Industrial Light and Magic, you know, is also a part of this. The 501st is also a part of this. So, yes, if you're a fan of Star Wars, this is something you want to start watching. Don't wait for it to come out on DVD. The price for Disney Plus is not that much. And you get to experience it along with us, and then you don't have to worry about spoilers. Uh, I love The Mandalorian. I cannot wait until episode three. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for tuning in for my synopsis of episode one and episode two of The Mandalorian. I don't know that I'll do this continuing going forward because, you know, I said that I would do book reviews and uh, toy reviews, and I'm still... I still want to focus on that, but I didn't want The Mandalorian to slip by and have me not mention it because that doesn't make sense. It's, you know, something that's happening in the Star Wars universe. I know Jedi Fallen Order uh, just got released as well, and uh, I do have a PlayStation and I would totally love to play it, but it's one of those things that my family buys me at Christmas and they have such a hard time shopping for me, so I know that's probably on the list of things that I'll get, so I, I might have to wait until Christmas to see Jedi Fallen Order, but... I've been living vicariously through all of you who started playing it already and the game looks amazing. Hey, thanks for watching and may the force be with you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.